name is Jessica Tucker. I'm a dietitian here at Milford Hospital. I've been working here for six years and I work with Kathy in the cardiac rehab program, but I also work in the hospital with a lot of the um, cardiac patients on the cardiac units that we have here. Um, so tonight, um, Deb asked me to give you some healthy eating guidelines. So one word you're not gonna hear me say tonight is diet because I hate that word. Um, what I am going to talk about is, you know, changing your lifestyle and making better choices that you can live with. Because a diet has this idea that you're going to start and finish, and that's not what I want you to do. I want you to get some tools and use them and make changes in your lifestyle. All right, so my goals for tonight, um, a few things I want to go over. I want to help you identify what a heart-healthy eating plan is. Explore the different aspects of the eating plan. Explore real life techniques that you can apply to your life and use the eating plan. Use the food label in your dinner plate as a guide. And use the knowledge learned um, tonight to make better choices. And improve your own recipes and discover new ones. So along the side, I, um, there's two sample recipes that you can try tonight and I um, have the printed copy for you to take home. And then there's a few different um, recipes that I printed off along with the red handouts, have my PowerPoint presentation, and a couple other um, handouts in there. So what is a heart healthy eating plan? What do you guys think? Kathy talked a little bit about it in her presentation. So when you think of a heart healthy eating plan, what do you think of? Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so my idea of a heart-healthy eating plan um, is the DASH eating plan. Has anyone heard of this before? Okay, so DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. Um, even if you don't have hypertension, this is the eating plan that I'd suggest for everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit about it. it the DASH eating plan follows heart-healthy guidelines to limit saturated fat and cholesterol, focus on increasing intake of foods rich in nutrients that are expected to lower blood pressure, mainly minerals like potassium, calcium, and magnesium, protein, and fiber. It includes nutrient-rich foods that, um, that it meets other nutrient requi requirements as recommended by the Institute of Medicine. So let's get into a little bit more. So how can I move towards a heart? healthy eating plan. So to break it down, the DASH packet is about 64 pages long, so that would take a little bit of a long, time, a long time to go through tonight. So I took the main points and that's what we're going to go through tonight. So one of the main points is whole grain choices most of the time, along with increasing fiber-rich plant-based protein sources such as legumes, so beans. So if you notice over there, my two recipes that I have for you include beans, both of them. One's a snack option and one is a dessert option, um, black bean brownies. I bet no one thought that <laughs> you'd have um, black beans in your brownies, but you would never tell the difference if you, I didn't tell you that they were in there. Um, lots of fruits and vegetables. Low total fat and saturated fat, so that's the bad fat that raises our bad cholesterol, so we want to limit that, um, along with no trans fat. Replacement of saturated and trans fat with heart healthy mono and polyunsaturated fats and low sodium intake. So those are the goals that I want to get across to you tonight and show you how you can implement this into your own eating um, lifestyle. So let's talk about the first one that, we, um, that I have up there, the whole grain choices. So just a little tidbit of what a whole grain is. I know there's a lot of media out there about what whole grains are, um, but basically it has the whole entire part of that whole grain kernel in the product that you're having. Um, so white bread comes from wheat, but it's stripped down of all the good stuff. So we want to have all that good stuff in there because all that good stuff has that fiber. And what that fiber does is it helps to lower our bad cholesterol. Um, it does a whole host of other things, it helps keep you full, helps to keep you regular. So there's, fiber is great, so that's why we want those whole grains, is for that fiber. Okay, so what can you do in your everyday life to get those whole grains? So substitute those enriched products for whole grain products. So when I say enriched, does everyone know what that means? 
Can you throw out some examples of an enri enriched product? White bread. White, bread. Pasta. white pasta. Rice. White rice. So all those things have all that good portion of that whole grain stripped away. And then they add back the vitamins and minerals. So white bread has all the vitamins and minerals, but they're added back. They don't have that good fiber that we want. So some examples. So try to go for a whole wheat bread or whole grain bread instead of that white bread. Um, even, I know there's a lot of different products out there. A lot of people ask me, well, what about that whole grain white bread that they have? Has anyone <laughs> seen that? No. Yeah. yeah. Wonder Bread makes a whole grain white bread. So you really have to take a look at that label a little bit closer and not just what you see on the shelf. So flip that package over and read the ingredients. Um, so when I was preparing for this class, I kind of looked at some of the labels that are out there. And the wonder, I'm not promoting or saying that one product's better than the other. I just kind of looked at some of the ones that are out there. And the wonder bread that says it's a whole grain white bread, it is an enriched product, but they do have some whole grain flour in there. So you really want to look at the label. And the first ingredient that you want to look at should be a whole grain flour or whole wheat flour. And there are some of the white breads that claim to be whole grain that are made with the whole wheat flour as the first ingredient. So there are some out there that are um, pretty good choices, but you have to do that research for yourself. Um, every day I call cardiac rehab patients because part of their program includes a vis visit with a dietitian, and I sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, or I do group classes, and everyone asks me, can I have this? Can I have this? Is this good for me? Is this good for me? I can This brain up here can't hold that kind of information. You know, there's, I'm going to help you learn how to read a label tonight, and you have to look at that stuff. So um, two words that I hate to use around food are good and bad, because I don't feel like there's one good food versus one bad food. Everything can fit in your eating plan. Um, it's just making the best choices most of the time. You know, I'm not going to tell you you can never have birthday cake again, um, but we have to make the better choices most of the time. Okay, so getting back on track with the whole grains. So try to do whole wheat or whole grain pasta instead of white pasta. Um, a lot of people tell me that it's grainy or they don't like the texture. There are a lot of different varieties out there. When they first came out um, and they were being marketed, they weren't that great, but there are a lot of brands out there now, so you just have to find one that you like. Um, and I'm sure you can find one that you like. Brown rice or wild Sorry, rice ins please. instead of white rice. Yeah. Um, oh, when you're making a recipe, you know, add in some whole wheat flour. You usually can't do um, a complete substitution for a white flour, but you can add about half of um, what it calls for with whole wheat flour and do the rest with all-purpose flour to get some whole grains in your, in your products that you're making. Um, the brownies that I made tonight don't have any flour in them at all, so it's just the, the black beans. Um, if you're making something that calls for breadcrumbs, you know, you can make your own breadcrumbs with um, whole grain bread leftovers that you have, or try using oats instead and get that fiber. Okay, and then there are a ton of different grains out there that, you know, they're making, um, you know, an appearance on the shelves. Has anyone ever heard of quinoa? Okay, it has a high amount of protein and it's a whole grain. So you can try these different things. And I put recipes out there for some of the grains that you might not have heard of before, um, but you can, you know, try them in your new, in your eating plan. So some different ones that are available out there. Um, and again, when I was doing research for my presentation, I went to the supermarket and I, you know, you can find most of these things at the regular supermarket. Um, some of them that you, you know, don't really hear of that often, you can maybe find at Whole Foods, which I did find a few of them there. I've never heard of that stuff. Yeah. Triticale? Tri 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 um, Triticale, and I have, um, I wrote down what it is. It's um, a cousin to wheat. And I think I'd, there is a recipe over there for it. I wonder if the people at the store are going to know what it is. <laughs> you have some triticale? What is that? <laughs> um, usually in the, the natural food section, you're going to find these kinds of things. Um, but a lot of the um, mainstream 
you know, brand names such as Near East, they have whole grain versions. But you have to be really cautious of things that come in a package like that because um, they're going to be loaded with sodium. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So trying to make things at home helps you to reduce the sodium. And trying to eat foods in their natural state helps you to reduce the sodium. All right, so let's go back to our goals. So the next goal I have is, you know, get lots of fruits and vegetables. All right, so your goal for the day with the DASH eating plan is about four servings from each group, okay? So you're probably thinking, how am I ever going to eat that in one day? <laughs> That's way too many. So let's, let's break it down. So let's start with breakfast and your mid-morning snack, all right? So breakfast, four ounces of orange juice, which is my recommended limit for juice for the day, um, and half a banana slice on your whole grain cereal. All right, so you're already at two servings for breakfast. So let's go to our snack. Homemade trail mix with a quarter cup of dried cranberries or raisins with two tablespoons of walnuts and one tablespoon of chocolate chips. So now we're already up to three for the day. And it's not even lunchtime yet. All right, so let's move to lunch and your afternoon snack. So a medium apple sliced. A salad, which consists of one and a half cups of mixed greens, a half cup of mixed vegetables, like cucumbers, tomatoes, carrots. You're already, you know, up to three servings at lunchtime, so if we tack that on, we'll add it all up at the end. And then you have a snack of bell peppers, carrot sticks, and low-fat dressing. All right, let's move on to dinner and your bedtime snacks. So at dinner, you have one cup of broccoli, half a cup of applesauce alongside your, you know, your portion of meat and your whole grain. And then for a snack, you have, um, you know, half a cup of frozen or fresh berries, a top low-fat chocolate pudding, a half a serving, and then that should say a half a cup and that, um, with the fresh or frozen berries there, just a misspelling there. So grand total, if you had all those things that I recommended there, You'd have five and a half servings of fruit and five servings of vegetables. Okay, so it's not hard to do. Who thinks that they can work on that goal? Okay, so if you're filling up your day with your fruits and vegetables, that leaves less space for things that you really shouldn't be having, right? It's always room for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our goals. So let's talk about um, lowering the fat intake, okay? <laughs> so let's change the way you look at fat. So you have to choose the right fats. So things that have the good fats in them, um, the mono and the polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, are olives, nuts, avocados, seeds, and oils. So let's understand which foods have the bad fats and um, which ones have the good fats. So we talked a little bit about the good fats. The bad fats, um, which raise your bad cholesterol, French, um, French fries. <laughs> what kind of fat does French fries have? Saturated. Saturated. Trans fats. Okay, saturated fats will. Um, bring these up. So we talked a little bit about the good fats, but you have to remember that even though they're good fats, they still have calories. So good fats and bad fats have the same amount of calories per serving. Um, so a tablespoon of Crisco has the same amount of um, fat as a tablespoon of olive oil. So one's a bad fat, which raises your bad cholesterol. One's um, a pretty good fat, which is better for your heart they still have the same amount of calories. So you don't want to have go overboard with the good fats, okay? Um, so you want to avoid f fats that are solid at room temperature. So those are going to be your saturated fats. So butter, stick margarine, shortening, okay? Replace the solid fats with liquid fats when needed. So choose a light tub margarine, or use a cooking spray or a mister with olive oil instead of, you know, putting that butter in the pan to grease it. And you want to limit your total fat intake. So avoid foods that um, are cooked in a high fat preparation. So like you said, those french fries. Um, and choose foods that are 
you know, in their natural state. So we want to get the good fats. So who can tell me what some of the good fats are? An avocado, avocado yeah. <coughs> Speak up. Olive oil. Olive oil. Um, and some of the other things that we want to try to get fats from are fish. So those fatty fish is what we want to get those good fats Salmon. from. Mm -hmm. um, the fat that's in those fish help to raise our good cholesterol. Okay, so that's where we, those omega-3s we want to get. So those, the fish. Um, anyone else can give me an idea where we can get those good fats? What kind of nuts? Walnuts. <laughs> Walnuts. Walnuts are a great source of omega-3s. How about almonds? Do you remember what I just said a few minutes ago? I don't use the words good and bad around food. So almonds are a good choice, but you have to remember they have fat. Walnuts are a better choice for omega-3s. Oh, okay. How about eating peanut butter out of the jar? <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter, yeah? uh, I just had allergies. And mm -hmm. like, you know, no nuts, no chocolate, no fruits, no um, <coughs> you know, barley, rye, you know, the whole thing. So how do you, <laughs> what, what do folks do in that situation? Drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> what I would recommend is probably make an appointment with one of our outpatient dietitians that works specifically with allergies to help you manage that. Um, what kinds of things do you eat? Well, plus you've got the whole uh, population now of the whole gluten thing, you know. What do you mean by that? Well, the folks that say that they can't have, you know, all those wheat products. So if we go back to those whole grains, um, many of them are not wheat-containing. So they're... Store a lot of the stuff says gluten-free. Yep. They're, they do have to label that now um, on the label so you'll see that it says gluten-free. Um, but many of the whole grains you can find aren't, don't have gluten. So quinoa is gluten-free, um, rice is gluten-free. Um, I'd have to look and see what I have. Aren't the listings of all your, um, well, you had them at the beginning, of all your um, wheats, aren't they all just cousins of each other? Like the barley and the rye and the quinoa and the one that started with the tea? Aren't they all just part of the same family? Not all of them, no. no. So the quinoa is gluten-free, buckwheat is actually gluten-free. Um, rye and oats can be contaminated with gluten, so those are recommended to avoid if you do have celiac disease. Um, but rice is gluten-free. Yep, all of these are carbs. But I thought it was, well, you're saying brown rice, right? You're not brown rice. White rice. Brown rice and wild rice are the better choices. Did I answer your question? Well, you know, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge. Definitely with allergies, it's a big challenge. Um, I don't specialize in allergies. We do have some outpatient dietitians that do, <coughs> and they can help you out if you do have specific allergies that you want to talk to them about. There's some, some kind of frozen um, substitute bread that uh, somebody was telling me about. It's um, bread. It's, it's used instead of bread. It's not wheat. It's, uh, oh. yeah. it's over in the frozen part. Something like that, yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're, and it's, uh, it's a lot of people use it to lose weight too, and to not have the intake of the wheat. That's that's controversial. Is that if you're going to cut anything out of your diet, you're going to lose weight. So if you cut wheat products out of your diet. That's limiting a lot of products. Right, but I think if she was talking about an allergy, it might right. be an alternative. Right, there are, t there are tons of products on the market now that are gluten-free. 
Um, if you go to any supermarket and you go to the frozen section, you go to the natural food section, you're going to find gluten-free products that are, that, are avail that are available. And you can find whole grain gluten-free products as well. All right, so getting back to fat, I forget where, how we got off on that <laughs> tangent, but getting back to the fat, um, so avoiding things that are processed and eating things in their natural state is the best way to go in regards to any of the food groups. Um, questions on fat before we move on? Yep. Um, if you, you're not supposed to eat butter, what about the things that they sell like, I can't believe it's not butter? Mm -hmm. Is that better or they all are yucky? Well, if you're going to use, if you're the type of person that uses a spread or butter on your toast in the morning, um, on something at lunch, at something at dinner, you're, that's adding up throughout the day, I would recommend a light tub margarine. And if you have, want specifics, I can get you that information. Um, because that's going to be the lower in the total, sa total fat, saturated fat, and trans fat. So you want to look at the label. You want it to be um, zero trans fat per <coughs> serving for any kind of spread. Okay, one more thing. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. What about um, like coffee creamers? What about them? <laughs> the ones that say they say they have no fat, or, right. or the ones that are flavored and have like one gram of fat. Right. So you have to. We're gonna get to the label and what to look at okay. on the label, but I'll um, while we're on the topic of fat, trans fat a big thing we want that always to be zero but what the labeling people do they want to sell their product okay so they can label it as zero grams of trans fat per serving if it's 0.5 grams or less and they can label it as zero so you have to really be a detective and look at the label and read the ingredients so some other words that you might want to look for, hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils, that's a trans fat. So if it says zero grams of trans fat per serving, and you see that in the ingredient list, it's probably going to have about 0.5 grams per serving. And if you're having more than one serving, you're going to get, you know, one or two grams. So you really have to be cautious of that. Okay. Okay. All right. So looking at um, other food products that have fat, so red meat, we want to limit that to um, no more than once per week. So this includes your beef, pork, veal, and lamb. Okay, want to try to use chicken, turkey, fish, or a meatless protein, so legumes or soy would be an alternative. Um, aim for a meatless meal at least once a week. Okay. Um, and think about how you use your fats. So use them as garnishes. So add some nuts to your rice or your salad. Um, slice some avocado on your sandwich. Sprinkle some seeds on your oatmeal or in your yogurt. Instead of having them, you know, a handful of nuts where you can go overboard pretty quickly, you know, have that small amount. Measure it out and put it on your salad. <laughs> All right, so the last one is um, low sodium intake. So goal for the day should be no should be less than 2300 milligrams and that's um, what the what the recommendation is and the American Heart Association recommends um, 1500 milligrams or less which is very hard to get down to um, if you go out to dinner you're gonna and you eat that whole meal you're gonna be over 2300 at just that meal so you really have to be cautious of where your sodium is coming from. So every food has sodium. Um, so there's no need that you need to no need to add it when you're cooking um, or flavoring. You know, go for other things for flavor. So you you're going to get enough sodium for your day um, to probably exceed what your recommendation is. So truly, really don't try to add anything. Um, use pepper and different herbs and seasoning blends. Um, make your own seasoning blends. Mrs. Dash is a great one. They have many different varieties, but you can make your own. Um, so avoid anything with added salt or sodium. Try lemon. Um, Are there any difference between regular salt and sea salt, or is it all sodium? It's all sodium. Thank you. You know, they, again, there's 
marketing schemes. They want to sell their product. And if we're telling you you have to limit your sodium, and they say, well, it's lower sodium sea salt, it's still sodium. You really want to try to avoid using that. All right, so the tools that you're going to need when you go home is your food label. You know, you really have to look at this and know what to look for. So I picked out some of the things that I really focus on with my cardiac rehab patients. So the first thing you want to look at is your serving size and your servings per container. Okay. It doesn't mean you have to eat that serving size. It just means if you have more or less, your numbers are going to change. Servings per container. Why is this so important? If you grab a little bag of nuts or a can of soup, you typically can eat that by yourself pretty easily. And then you realize there was two servings in there or even three servings in there. So you really have to pay attention to that. The next thing that I um, recommend looking at is your total fat, your saturated fat and your trans fat. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. So your goal should be less than five grams for total fat less than three grams for saturated fat, and trans fat always zero. Sodium, like I said, our goal for the day is under 2,300 milligrams. So you have to think about our, how many meals are you eating and how many snacks are you eating and try to you know, divvy it up and try to keep it under those numbers that you make for yourself. So if you're a three meal kind of day and your goal is about um, 2,300, you know, you could do, you know, 600, 700 per meal, depending on what kind of foods you're having. Okay. And then the last thing is that fiber. Okay. So you're going to get your fiber from your whole grains, your fruit and veggies, and your, um, your beans. So you really want to try to get as much as you can because your goal is 25 to 30 grams. And a lot of us don't reach that every day. Okay. And then using your plate as a guide. So long gone is the food guide pyramid. We now have the plate. Okay, so choose my plate. So this is what your plate should look like at your meal time. So half of your plate should be your fruits and vegetables at every meal. So if you keep this in the back of your mind, when you're going to, you know, portion out your dinner or your lunch or your breakfast, think about how your, your plate looks. Okay. So the last thing they want to talk about is recipe modification because that's what it's all about, the food. That's why I became a dietitian because I love food. So how can we make our recipes better for us? So there's three things that we could do, elimination, reduction, and substitution. All right, so let's talk about um, these three things. So think outside the box. So instead of grabbing that box on the, on the, um, on the shelf, Make your own stuff. Um, you know, a lot of us have access to the internet. Recipes are very easy to come by and be willing to try new things. That's the best way to, to go about it. So first step, elimination. Is the, res is the ingredient really necessary? So if you're making, you know, rice or pasta um, and you're tempted to add that salt to the water, do you really need it? Are you really going to tell the difference that there is salt in that water? You're really not going to tell, especially if you're putting some kind of sauce on it or having something else with it. You're not going to tell. So you really, you know, think about the ingredient. Do you really need it? Um, you know, I have stacks of cookbooks at home. I never put salt in anything, never. So, you know, if you're used to having salt, it might take a little getting used to, but once you get rid of it, you're not going to really miss it. Okay. And if we go back one slide, you know, elimination, you know, taking out the butter, the salt, the extra fat that we don't need. Think about things that you can add in. So add in extra vegetables, extra fruit, that kind of thing. Um, reduction. So does the recipe need all that's called for? So if you're baking, baking is a kind of a science, so you do need the specific measurements, but you can try to reduce things and see how it works out for you. So reduce the sugar by a third or a half. Um, use nonstick pans to reduce the use of oil or cooking sprays instead of oil um, <coughs> to reduce the extra fat. And then substitution. 
So find a healthier ingredient. I do this all the time. If a recipe calls for beef, I use chicken. Um, my husband doesn't like to eat beef, so chicken's what we eat in my house. So if a recipe calls for whole milk, you know, go for skim 1%, or if you need that creaminess, evaporated milk. You can get evaporated milk in skim milk form, and it gives you that creaminess that you need. <coughs> Sour cream, plain yogurt. Um, if you're looking for a plain yogurt to be a little bit thicker, you can strain it or you can buy the Greek yogurt and it's going to be nice and thick like the sour cream that you're looking for and it has that tanginess that um, you're looking for too. Beef, you know, go for chicken. Oil, so applesauce or purees like fruit or bean purees like my brownies for example. White flour, whole wheat flour. Like I said before, you can't go one to one on this. You have to, you know, maybe go half white flour, half whole wheat flour. All right. So, questions, comments? Just on the evaporated mm -hmm. milk. Are those things becoming a little canned? Yep. You want to be careful that you're not getting sweet and condensed. Okay. You want to get evaporated. And so maybe the person that asked about a coffee creamer, would that be a substitute for that? I don't know if you could put it in your coffee, but you know. Low fat I'm milk. Gonna you gonna try it? Yes, oh, good. Oh. Very small can. Yeah. It really, yeah, by a very small can of the evaporated skim milk, yeah. it, yeah. Used yeah. 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 it used to be used in coffee. Yeah. I don't drink coffee, mm -hmm. but I remember my parents that's talking about it. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah, she was just saying it was evaporated milk. And they learned to drink black coffee. And then if you get the Truvia, product for the sugar substitutes. Mm -hmm. It's supposedly a natural substitute instead of the aspartame or something like that. Mm -hmm. Could be used instead of the sweetened condensed, you mentioned? Well, sweetened condensed milk is more of a, um, an ingredient kind of product. You wouldn't use that for a coffee creamer. Yeah. So it would just be the evaporated. Yeah. Okay. I'll try it. Instead of the heavy I cream. just had a comment mm -hmm. about the, um, the white the whole wheat flour. Mm -hmm. I've been using white whole wheat flour. It's actually a grain that grows yep. in the field. So yep. it's not white in any way, shape, or form except the name. It's yes. a different type there of whole is, wheat. Yep. It's kind of like an albino whole wheat. <laughs> it's much lighter. I, I used to use half whole wheat, half white. Now I just use all white whole wheat. And what, what is the, what is it called? White it says whole, white whole, whole wheat, wheat, wheat Yeah, King Arthur. It's in the store. Okay, thank Where you. Where do you get it? Mm -hmm. The store. Yeah. Like, not everywhere, but shop, yeah. shop and shop. Yeah. Good places have it. That's a good thing to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You have to watch your sugar intake. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things that are factory, they boost it with a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. Like on the milk, the skim milk has a ton of sugar. So well, any kind of milk is going to have sugar because it has milk sugar. But can you substitute it like for rice, with rice milk or? You could, but you'd have to look at the label, and um, you don't want to look at the sugar, you want to look at the total carbohydrate, because our body takes any kind of carbohydrate and makes it into sugar. So you don't want to look at just the sugar on the label. And then one other question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, the, um, the lady you were talking about, they'll, they'll say a serving is um, a dry mix, as opposed to like the oat, like the one of your cereals is mm -hmm. dry, so how do you know how much it is when it's cold? Um, like oatmeal, for example, a half a cup of dry oatmeal makes about a cup of cooked oatmeal. We have time for just one or two more questions. I love cheese. I snack on cheese all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a cheese person. I love cheddar. I love the only one that I don't like is American. <laughs> and I d that's one thing I didn't bring up in my talk, but you want to look at the label is that, that tool that you can use. So cheese is um, naturally going to be high in fat and high in sodium. So you really have to think how that's going to play into your whole intake for the day and try to find something that has less than that five I grams. Because cheddar and I'll have three olives with it. <laughs> all right there, there's all, yeah, but it's healthy too at the same time. Right, but we want to try to limit how much total, even though it's the good healthy fat, we want to, cheese isn't the good healthy fat, but the olives are. Yeah. Okay. One, one more question. 
I just was hoping you would comment on um, the sugar and products, like how the translation, I, I was told that one gram of sugar is equivalent to a quarter um, teaspoon of sugar, is that right? So if you eat something that has 16 grams of sugar, it translates into about four teaspoons of sugar? I would have to look that up. I don't know what off the top of my head what the equivalent is. I, thi I think it is. But um, as you notice, I didn't touch on sugar on my label because I don't think that's an important thing to look at. If you're watching your carbohydrates for, say, your blood sugar purposes, carbohydrates is the most important thing to look at, not the sugar. Um, it's not something that I recommend looking at. I don't know what you're, what you're looking for when you're saying that you want to look at sugar. Um, if you wanted to chat later, I could go over that in detail with you, though. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That was wonderful.